Hello, thank you for joining us for the IC Squared Institute Best Practices Series. My name is Rifat Manasia. I'm the Director of Strategy and Engagement here at the Institute located at the University of Texas in Austin. Joining me today is Ellen Ray. Hello, Ellen. Hi, nice to be with you. She's the Executive Director of the Stillwater Foundation, where she's been for the past 22 years actively engaged in their mission. She's also the Chair of the Texas Rural Funders, which is a collaboration of over 27 foundations who are committed to the future of Texas. And they believe that this highly depends on strong, successful rural communities. This model is becoming, uh, is emerging to be a national model for how rural philanthropy can work in our country. Ellen is on top of that, just a dynamic, dedicated and driving philanthropist leader who is committed to bringing positive change in Texas and beyond. She is dedicated to many, many efforts around our state and beyond. And I'm really, really glad um, that she can have the time to join us today. Well, Ellen, let's just get to it. I you know, mentioned Stillwater briefly, but could you give us a, a, a little bit more of a detailed overview about Stillwater Foundation and also Texas Rural Funders that you chair? You bet. So Stillwater is a private family foundation based here in Austin, but with deep roots in West Texas. Um, we support the arts, education, and the environment. Those are our biggest giving areas. Uh, but since about 2015, 2016, we also have a portfolio in West Texas, um, particularly the Permian Basin and the Trans-Pecos. Um, the family has, as I said, deep roots in West Texas in around the Abilene and Albany area. And um, much of the wealth of the foundation comes from oil and gas holdings. And so uh, the board wanted to find ways to give back to those communities from which we had received so much and to partner with them to think about their sustainability outside of the boom and bust cycle of oil and gas. So that led to our specific portfolio, as I said, in the Permian and the Trans-Pecos. The Texas Rural Funders is a group, as you mentioned, of 27 funders. Um, some of us are small and place-based. Uh, like the Stanzel Foundation in Schulenburg. Some of us are large and international like the Gates Foundation, but we are all united in our interest in bringing additional attention and resources to rural Texas. And we have realized that by taking a highly coordinated approach and working together, we can have a much bigger impact than we could as one funder working alone. Well, thank you, Ellen. And, and I'm sure these things uh, are keeping you very, very busy. You're also part of our, our advisory board at the IC Squared Institute, where you're a um, very, very active member. If I may ask, uh, our missions also align here at the Institute and what you're doing at Stillwater and Texas Rural Funders. What are the priorities um, in 2021 for rural areas in Texas and beyond, and, and the overlap of all the efforts that you're engaged with, with the various foundations and collaborations. Sure, so um, as I mentioned, we are a diverse group of funders at uh, TRF. Some of us are focused on education, some healthcare, some natural resources, some the arts. Um, so we have very intentionally looked for cross-sector opportunities in which to uh, focus our attention. So we have three signature issues at Texas Rural Funders that we are addressing and will be focused on in 2021. The first is our partnership with the Texas Tribune. Tribune, As I mentioned, uh, one of, what we are united in is our desire to bring additional attention and resources to rural Texas. So this is a, the way that we bring attention. And the Tribune has hosted now, both in 2018 and in 2020, the Future of Rural Symposium. And that has been a great platform by which to look at all these issues, education, healthcare, economic development, and so forth, um, and bring together a great audience. In 2018 in College Station, where the first symposium was held, we were thrilled when over 600 people attended in person, 1,500 live streamed. In 2020, the symposium was virtual, of course, and over 37,000 people tuned in over the course of a week, um, devoting their lunch hour to learn more about rural Texas. So that's been a great partnership. And we also have a series
series of events, both virtual and in person that we are planning to do with the Tribune in the off year in 2021 before the next symposium in 2022. So that's one of our signature issues. The second is capacity building. And we do this in two ways. One, at the organizational level, we have a partnership with Catch a Fire, uh, which is a, a national group that uh, puts volunteers with uh, nonprofits that need project help. And those volunteers provide that support free of charge. So thanks to the St. David's Foundation, we are able to have a rural cohort across the state that is taking advantage of these free nonprofit services. The other side of our capacity building signature issue is individual leadership development. And that's a strategy that is emerging as we speak. We've done quite a bit of research. Uh, we know where we're headed and we just issued an RFQ to get more feedback about what organizations uh, might like to partner with us. And as you know well, we're very interested in the Home to Texas program that IC Squared is doing. Um, and that might be a great way to align uh, our individual leadership efforts with what IC Squared is doing. And then our third signature issue, as if those first two were not enough, our third is rural broadband access and connectivity. And we've been working on this issue uh, for several years, well before the pandemic, again, because there's no distance learning, telemedicine, economic development, ag management, none of those things are possible that our funders are focused on without uh, strong, decent, broadband service. So as I said, we were working on it before. The pandemic has exposed the depth of the digital divide. So we have now very intentionally a much bolder advocacy agenda uh, for this 2021 legislative session than we, than we could have imagined before March. And I'm happy to dive into that in a minute too. Absolutely. And let's go just dive right in. What are some of the specific efforts um, that you, uh, both on Stillwater and at the Texas Rural Funders are doing for increasing broadband access and quality in the rural areas. So we have a three-part strategy, uh, advocacy strategy. The first piece is our partnership with Connected Nation Texas. So Connected Nation is a national organization and um, they do work in states, in all the states, many states, and they were actually had a presence in Texas um, with stimulus money in 2008, 2009. And then when that money dried up, 2013, 2014, in most states, public dollars were found to continue the Connected Nation office. In Texas, um, there were those, that did not happen, um, but they still kept their connections here, their relationships. So uh, through Stillwater, I reached out to them in 2016 to see if they might help us in West Texas do some work. And they were very willing and able and had great connections to the Texas Department of Agriculture. Well, jump cut uh, to a couple of years later, and the Texas Rural Funders raised, um, has raised two and a half million dollars to open the Connected Nation Texas office. And thank goodness we did, because um, again, prior to the pandemic, they have developed uh, granular level maps about who is connected across the state. And these maps have been invaluable for instance, to the Governor's Broadband Council in terms of um, seeing where there are gaps in both access, so that's infrastructure, or in adoption, which is um, the challenge of subscription. And sometimes you might have uh, physical infrastructure, but it's too expensive uh, to afford. So you have to know what problem you're addressing. And Connected Nation with their neutral data um, has been a critical partner for us. So I said we had a three-pronged strategy. First, Connected Nation. The second is our uh, broad coalition that we have built in conjunction with Texas 2036 and Greater Houston Partnership to form Digital Texas, which is a, as I said, a huge coalition across the state advocating for change uh, via public policy. And I'll talk about what we're advocating for in just a second. And then the third piece of our strategy at TRF is to hire uh, salient strategies, uh, an advocacy firm that can help us navigate uh, the system 
and, and uh, work with us on this broad coalition. So just briefly, what are we advocating for? A state broadband plan. You may know that Texas is one of only six states that does not have one. Puerto Rico has a broadband plan. All the states that surround us, Oklahoma, Louisiana, New Mexico have state broadband plans. Texas does not. And that means we are at a disadvantage for federal dollars. So we really need to get that plan. We also need a state broadband office. We need several FTEs devoted to broadband planning. So so that we can maximize these federal dollars and local opportunities. And we're also looking for efficient policies that, um, that maximize the opportunity for infrastructure build out and reduce costs around uh, adoption and use. What are the different dimensions of getting broadband to our rural communities? As you know, Ellen, um, IC Squared Institute can just recently convened 150 community leaders from across 58 communities um, around all the regions of Texas and broadband continue to come up as the primary priority, top, top, top agenda for them. Because can you just, for those of us that are super, super, you know, stuck in a cave, tell us why is broadband important to rural America? Well, my goodness, I mean, think of what we are now all doing online, right? Virtual learning, telemedicine, telehealth, commerce, right. um, applying for job benefits, uh, paying taxes. Um, and there's the whole entertainment piece too. Yeah. So, uh, so our lives are, um, are uh, very much impacted by our ability to be online. And we often say that broadband is no longer a luxury. It is really a utility. It's gone yeah. from a need to have to a must have. And so, and rural communities have been at a great disadvantage because there's often not been the market for providers to build out there, um, but they should not be disadvantaged by their zip code. So, um, so again, as I mentioned, when you're talking about the challenges of, around broadband, it's really important to know what you're addressing. Is it an infrastructure issue, a physical access problem, or is it a, an adoption problem, which means subscription, or is it a use problem? Meaning you have the infrastructure and you have, you can afford it, but you don't have the device or you don't know how um, to use technology in the most effective way. So we at TRF have tried to be very intentional about what problem we're facing. Now, I will say, I mentioned our partnership with Connected Nation Texas, and you talked about the rural communities that IC Squared is working with. Connected Nation Texas has provided us with this invaluable data about connectivity across the state. But they are also working with 27 counties or communities, the communities themselves get to decide what they, how to be defined, but 27 counties across the state to develop technology action plans. And that brings together the local providers, the school superintendent, the county judge, the mayor, the librarian, all together in the room and problems start to get solved just by having those folks together. And they get to, they do in deep surveys in their own community. They get to look at the da data and decide what they're gonna prioritize. So again, Texas Rural Funders feels that it's important to work from the bottom up yes. and empower communities to make decisions from them, for themselves, but also to work from the top down and at an advocacy and policy level um, with the state legislature. And, and, and the funders are doing that. What, I, what we've noticed, Ellen, is that the ground roots um, are ready, are active. And the, one of the amazing things about being in, in smaller communities, rural, remote communities is things get done faster. So you, you get to bring the, the folks in a room and decisions are made much faster because of lower bureaucracy. Folks know each other, the smaller population. Uh, uh, we, we, we have seen that the, the um, velocity, the speed with which things get done can be quite fast. So the gra grassroots level is ready. And, and, and we have seen that in the mayors and the CDCs and the EDCs that we continue to engage with at IC Squared across the state. Um, but heading into the lunch session, uh, the advocacy and uh, the, the, the championing of broadband as utility will be quite important. Please consider IC Square your partner. Uh, we have faculty at the University of Texas at Austin that are deeply engaged in research that can um, show the benefits, impacts, and uh, strategies to expand this uh, uh, that's research-driven. 
um, uh, for the legislative session as well. Heading into 2021, in addition to the, the priorities that um, the, the funders, the Texas rural funders have, where do you see us going? Where do you see rural communities in Texas and beyond, Ellen? And you have had vast experience um, across all of the efforts and organizations, and we're in the middle still of our pandemic, um, and it, there's a long road ahead, but what would be your message for 2021 and, and how to you use this time? Well, that's a great question. And you're so right about how things can happen fast in smaller communities. And Texas Rural Funders has been very intentional about wanting to lift up rural voices and be guided in our own initiatives by those on the ground, those folks who live in those communities, um, not you and me here in Austin. So we have a rural advisory committee of over 120 folks, um, practitioners, advocates, uh, regional representatives, the whole spectrum, but all living and working in rural Texas. And we seek their input regularly. Just in early December, we had a day long um, um, moderated session with this great group. And over and over and over, we heard uh, about how how they are collaborating in new ways. And that is what the what the, the pandemic has required. Even though we're all in our siloed in our boxes, um, we've had we have to work together on these deeper challenges. They've always been there. Um, COVID-19 has exposed them. And it was very heartening to hear um, this theme of collaboration come up over and over again, and that folks in rural communities were finding very interesting ways to partner across sector and across region uh, to get the job done for their communities. So um, we at Texas Rural Funders want to continue to support that work. I would also say that one of our, uh, like IC Squared, another close partner of Texas Rural Funders is Texas 2036. And Texas 2036 has developed a strategic plan for the state of Texas. Um, with our political system, uh, you know, we're, uh, it's, it can be easy to focus on just short term things uh, because the next politician will be in charge and you can only get small uh, things done in front of you. But Texas 2036 has put together a statewide plan to think about what Texas will look like in 2036. And Texas Rural Funders has supported that work deeply to ensure that that strategic plan includes rural concerns. And so, um, so I encourage everybody to check out the Texas 2036 website and uh, join us in this larger effort to think about uh, the opportunities in Texas. Uh, there's so much has been accomplished in our great state, but there are some challenges, but we believe at TRF that by working together and pooling our resources, um, that the state uh, can be much more healthy and, and we are dependent upon both healthy rural communities and healthy urban communities because we're inextricably linked. Ellen, thank you very much. You and I, I think as both as native Texans are dedicated to our state, we both work for organizations that are committed um, to the state and its well-being and its economic recovery as we all move forward. Um, I wanna thank you for your time and your dedication and your service to the people of Texas and beyond and being a champion for rural areas. Thank you, Ellen. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. It's a team effort and it's been great to be with you today.